Hello and welcome to another web development tutorial on this channel. And today what I want to do is I want to take one of my TypeScript libraries, which is currently built using Webpack and bring it over to Rollup and Vite so that I have a bit of a more modern approach. What I also want to do, I want to include dev containers into the development experience to make sure that whoever wants to check out this library and develop it has the same environment like I have. Let's just start. First of all, the library I'm talking about is this here, the Mebrad Gallery TS. It's a JavaScript gallery which I use on my homepage. It's optimized using lazy loading, so it's very fast loading images. It has a full screen mode and some other features which I've built in. And as you can see here in my GitHub repository, currently uses Webpack and also have several Webpack configurations because here this one I use if I built the distribution to be used directly on a web page, then here this one would be if I want to build the library to be included as an ES6 dependency, for example, if you want to use it in a React project. And then also here I have one to build a development version with some debug outs. So the first thing what I want to do, I want to include a dev container here. If you follow this channel, you've seen I made three videos about it and I also released a web development container which is publicly available in my Docker Hub and my homepage template, which is another open source project I'm working on. You see it here already includes the dev container and here in this example I already have it running in the dev container, which means all the tools, all the formatting, everything is set up. So you don't have to install anything on your system aside from Visual Studio Code, Docker and the dev containers extension. So that's the first thing we want to do now. But before we do so, let's first create a branch on the gallery project. So currently I have it here open on my local machine and I'm on the master here and we'll first now create a branch, git checkout. And I call it dev container. Let's just push the origin so I don't always need to include it when I push changes. git push minus u origin and then the branch. And now the branch is set up and I can start making changes. And what I will do, I'll just bring over the dev container configuration from my other project now. So just copy the complete folder and then we also gonna have a quick look at it. But if you are interested in the details, just recommend check out my previous videos where I show exactly what I'm doing. Let's just paste it here. And in it, we find the base Docker file, which shows the current version that's up on Docker Hub. So I'll delete it from here because we don't need it here. It's part of my homepage template. There, it's also where I make updates to Docker Hub. What we need here is just the Docker file, which uses what I just shown you in Docker Hub, the latest image, and then adds some additional tools on top of it, setting up a user here. Then we have the Docker Compose. In this case here, the one from my homepage template, I spin up the dev container, but I also spin up a test container, which we're not gonna need for the library development here. So I'm gonna remove this one. So now we're spinning up just the dev container and most important here, dev container JSON, which contains all the dependencies that are installed in Visual Studio Code. Now with this present, let's just see if we can start the development inside of the dev container. So I have the dev container extension installed. So I can just press Control Shift P and here already, since I used those recently, dev containers rebuilt and reopen in container. So I'll just use the rebuild option. So basically inside of the dev container, there's a server version of Visual Studio running where all the dependencies get installed. And then this here, this Visual Studio is still running on my Windows machine. It connects to that server and will then use the environment provided by the server, including all the dependencies. So if we go to dependencies here, you see those are the local ones I've installed on Windows and those are the ones inside of the dev container. So this every thing I need here for my typical web development. And now what we also need to do, the node modules here, still empty because it's not mounted while the rest of the code is mounted from my main system. The first thing, let's npmi install the dependencies. The nice thing about this is those are now only installed in the container. And as long as you keep the container, you don't have to install them again. The good thing is those node modules, they don't clutter your main system. So your Windows system or whatever, where you have maybe a backup set up. And yeah, all those node modules, typically thousands of files can make any copy operation very slow. So that's why I just keep it in the dev container and 
not on my main system. There I just have all the source files and also here the lib folder for the distribution of the lib. So now that all is installed, let's see if the build works. npm run build and it works. And now also before we merge this pull request, let's quickly check how big the currently built library actually is in my explorer. And you can already see it's 48 kilobytes. So I have tree shaking and everything minimizing active. And that's the current state of the library with Webpack and the Tarsa for minifying and some other plugins. Now we will try in the next step to change the project setup to use Rollup instead of Webpack. And we're going to use the Veed framework to set everything up because then we also get a little test server, which we might use to test the library instead of what I currently do, just using here those HTML pages, which are load from disk. Okay, so the changes have been pushed to my branch here, the dev container branch, and I'll now create a pull request. What you'll notice here for this first PR, we have 76 files that have changed. But actually, if you look at the changes, they didn't really change. It's just because before I was working in the Windows file system, now I pulled all those over into the dev container. Now we're in the Linux file system. So for this initial change, this PR has gotten a bit bigger. If you do such changes to your environment, also if you make changes to formatting or anything that encompasses a lot of files, it's always good to make a PR and just do this one thing in this PR so you can later easily identify it. And you don't mix it up with actual changes to the logic of your code. So I haven't made any of those. I just added the dev container, loaded the project once into the dev container, installed dependencies, build it once to make sure it works. And now we're going to merge this PR and then start with the real changes, which we want to have isolated from this initial step here. Now let's head back to the project, get the latest master and then create a new branch, which we're going to use to migrate from Webpack to Rollup. So after pulling the latest changes, it's a good idea to quickly confirm that the installation of the dependencies works and also the build still works. And now I'm going to create a new branch, I call it Rollup. And now that everything's set up, let's start with the real work. So there are several ways to set up a rollup project. One way would be to install just the rollup dependencies, create a rollup config yourself and build everything. But what I like to do is use the wheat framework, which you can use for all sorts of things. But you can also set up a simple JavaScript project here. And what you get with such a project is not only a rollup config, which is what Veed uses internally. You also get a instant server, which you can use if you want to have some test site for whatever library you're developing. And yeah, I like to use this framework because it's a more convenient way of setting up a rollup project. And first I will discard tsconfig and webpack and all that stuff. Let's first create a backup folder where I just put those in case I want to check the TypeScript config later. So I just move it up here. Well, let's not call it backup. Let's call it deprecated. And I make sure to delete it before I push anything to Git. Also here the package.log and the package JSON we want to move up here. And now it's time to create a Veed project. So let's do npm create Veed latest. The project name, that's also why I kept the package JSON. We want to have this name here, keeping our old name. And here is the selection I was talking about. What we want to do here is we just want to create a vanilla JavaScript project. And not JavaScript, actually, we use TypeScript. So the dependencies for TypeScript need to also be installed. And that's it. Now we have the basic setup, but since I gave it a name, it actually put it in a subfolder. Let's just move all the stuff up into the root folder. So what I'll not copy over is the source here, which is just a very simple JavaScript library, which is already loaded here in the index.html. So this index.html is what's used by V to create the test server. And you see here, it includes the main TS, which is what we have here in this source. We want to use our own source and also set everything up with Rollup a little more customized to build it the way we want. And now go through the different changes, make sure that everything builds, and then I'll walk you through what I've done and also show you the rollup config, how it's set up. 
Okay, so I now made all the changes necessary to build the module and I want to quickly walk you through it. So here in the TS config, target and module are all ES6 now. I've set the output directory for the type definitions to lib types. We'll come to that in a second. And then here define the behavior of the bundler, the linting, making it strict. And now we can have a look at the package JSON. Here are the changes. The new version now will be 1.7 and type is module. And this year, that's an important thing. If I build the ES6 version and want to use this library as a dependency, type definitions will be located here. And the module, the ES6 module is under the lib folder. And then there are a few scripts the dev script, which I'm going to show you, and the build script. The preview script we actually don't need here, so I just need those two. Then we have the dev dependencies and then author license and dependencies to some of my other open source projects. If you want to make changes to the rollup config for a vite project, you can create a vite.config.js file, and this is where most of the work is now done. So if we scroll to the top, you see here I have a custom Roller plugin, which we're going to look at in a second. But down here, this is how you define a custom VIT config. I wanted to adapt the build, which is why I have here a build object. I don't want source maps. You could also include source maps if you want. I want to empty the output directories and then here I can provide custom rollup options. And that's the essential way how you can configure how the output libraries are generated. First here I define the input. So you should have one index.ts file where all your exports which you want to have in your final library are included. And then I have in this case two different outputs. One is an ESM model for ES6. I place this in the library. So what we've just seen in package.json and the entry file names, I keep them, which means if we go here to the lib folder, you see the complete structure is the same with the exactly same names. The difference here is now already transpiled JavaScript and no longer TypeScript. And down here, the second target, that's very important for the use case where you want to have the library directly as dependency in a HTML page using the script tag. I use the format IIFE, which essentially creates a global variable, which is accessible then from other scripts via the script tag. Here I specify the output folder. In this case, we have lib minus IIFE, the name for the library. So we want to have a single variable as an export through which I can then access all the other exports I define in the index. And here is this entry file names. That's the name of the output library. It's a little misleading because it's called entry file names, but it's actually the name for the output. So if we look here at the lib IIFE, there's just one file which is named after this field here. Now, one quick look here at the source and the index ts. So here I export a total of five different objects, but when I want to access those, for example, this create slideshow, I will do this via the target that I defined here. And the name is Mebrite Gallery TS. So if we look here at the demo, for example, at the gallery HTML, we see down here in the script, I import from lib IIFE, the Mebrite Gallery TS min JS. And then to access the create gallery, I do this via this global variable. So that's important. This is what's holding everything together. Now, when I want to build, I just run npm run build creates a minified version and the ES6 version. Now, if we look at the file here and check the size, 41 kilobytes. So it's actually become smaller than what we had from Webpack. So we're already saving a good amount here, more than 10%, which is great. So the rollout bundler is a bit more efficient here. And then what we can also do, we can run npm run dev, which will start a dev server. So Vite directly starts a development server. And we can now open this URL in the browser. And what we see here is just a list of the different test demos I have. So down here, I've just this index HTML, which is the one that's served. And then I reference all the different demo pages here. And this way I can easily check, for example, does the different modes for the images work? So stretching, fit aspect, whatever. Or I can see here gallery test. Does the gallery work full screen? Or I can go back and have a look at the some scroller tests. So there are different versions here, which I test. So all this is just now served by Vite. 
So this is a very simple way to set up a project using Vite and Rollup and in the end have a much simpler setup than what I had before with Webpack. We just look at this Vite config here. It's much smaller and much easier to understand. Now what I didn't mention yet, down here we have some plugins. So one is this strip plugin, which I use to remove all the console logs because I don't want them in the final library. But more important here is this SVG import plugin. That's one I've written myself. So if we go up here, it's also very simple to write plugins for rollup. And what I wanted to do everywhere where I import an SVG, for example here in the builder, I import two SVGs, I want to include them as raw strings. So just as the raw string coming from the SVG file. Typically they are transformed to a base64 string, but this doesn't work very well if you want to use such a library in a home page. And that's why I've written my own plugin here. So this one will return null where it's not an SVG, but for SVGs we will first remove some string here if it's present. So this one is usually added by the module resolution by TypeScript. This part needs to be dropped. Then we can decode this string and then return it. And here again, we have to include the export default. So basically we're just dropping this part here and decoding the URL. Let me quickly show you how this then looks in the home page. So let's go to the gallery test, bring up the developer tools. And if I inspect, for example, this here, this is an SVG. You see here, we're dropping in the raw string of the SVG and in the markup, in the HTML markup, it then looks just as we want it. If you haven't yet worked with Rollup Vite, I think this might have been a bit much, but everything you see here, this code, it's all on my GitHub. So you can have a look and yeah, use it as a guide when you want to create your own Rollup projects for your own libraries. I'll also have a TypeScript boilerplate on my GitHub. So currently I have the boilerplate on my GitHub still using Webpack, but I'll also update this one to use the config I've just shown you. Then you can just use this as a boilerplate as a base for your libraries and it will work out of the box. I'll also include the dev container so it will be easy to use. So I hope you liked this video, found it interesting and yeah, don't forget, leave a thumbs up and see you next one. Bye.